Hello there. The movie Unstoppable. Based on a true story, I guess. No. That's right. I'm about to monologue, son. Okay. Movies nowadays occasionally, well, not really nowadays, movies will occasionally say that this is based on a true story just to draw interest. That now I've gotten to the point that I don't know if it's true or not, and honestly, I don't care if it's entertaining enough. I will enjoy it no matter what. It doesn't have to be based off a true story. Uh, but when it is, it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe people actually thought. I mean, like, uh, what was it, Pain and Gain? The fact that that actually happened. And my mother worked in law enforcement, so it's just like she was aware of some of those things that happened. It's just like it's crazy that people's minds go there. But it's not that movie. This is unstoppable. I don't know if this is was based on a real story. And honestly, I'm too lazy and honestly don't care enough to find out if it's actually true. So take it at your own merit if it's real or not. <laughs> yeah, but I love Denzel Washington and Chris Pine. The fact that they're meeting for the first time, they're roped into a situation that they I found it funny because they fo you follow them quite a lot through the beginning and they don't actually start doing anything till later on. Rosario Dawson is basically more of a key role in the beginning because it's her train from her uh, station that is considered a coaster, which basically is a, a train that has gone loose. There's no one at the helm. It's just rolling, but it's not in power, not anything. So it's, it's just rolling by its own power. That's uh, basically like if something you let a, uh, a ball fall down a hill. It rolls on its own power till it slows. So it was like that kind of thing. It's a coaster until they finally realize that it's stuck in full throttle. And I actually thought that was pretty cool. It was just like, I found it funny though, how it looked like he put it in park and then it slowly shifts back to throttle or to, to like fully engage. So it's just like, I, I don't know. I don't think that's how levers work unless he, the train was going through massive bumps. It would have changed. I still enjoy the film, even though it seems kind of off. It's funny every single time. Like I kept wondering, it's just like, why are they doing it this way? Because the very, the very end of the film, there is um, what is it? The very end of the film. Sorry, I got a message. The very end of the film. That's like the fourteenth time I've said that. Um, that how they stop the train finally is they drive up next to it and someone jumps on. I was wondering why didn't they do that from the beginning? Honestly, why what, when they had the chopper, did they not fly in from the front? Go the same speed. Because as long as they're going the same speed and the person who's dropping onto it is going the same speed, there's not an impact. There's more of an impact if you jump from a moving, moving truck onto a moving train. Why? Because as you're suspended through the air, you're stuck in limbo. So technically, the truck should have gone forward a bit even though you are thrown with the momentum of the truck you're never going as fast as the moment your feet left the ground so it's one of those things just like i think it would have the correct option was the very first plan they had to drop the chopper on the the have the chopper drop a person on top but it, it just seemed like they had to make it go on a little longer which is why i was like yeah this can't be a true story because you just drop someone on the front you're done or just drive someone up to the front you're done they had to make it more interesting by having a train lock up to the back and pull it the opposite direction but then again i don't know much about trains i love collecting them i have several myself but i don't know enough to do that <laughs> so, so it's like one of those things i probably should go to a train station probably should do a bit more research before i start ragging on little things like that because it's just like that would have made more sense to me that logically it makes more sense yeah, so it's one of those things. I do love the cast. That was the best part. Like uh, uh, Denzel Washington and Chris Pine are basically not liking each other in the beginning. They're at each other's throats. And then as time goes on, it just gets they they start to laugh with one another. Uh, Denzel Washington's daughters work at uh, Hooters, and he basically says it again till Chris Pine starts laughing. And then Chris Pine says, "I'm a fan." It's just like one of those things. It's just it, it starts to build to them getting together. And I actually enjoyed that. One thing I really do love, as I've probably mentioned several times before, is character development. I love characters. Characters can really make me enjoy something that's not worth being enjoyed. So that's to say, I mean, 
I I enjoyed the characters. I think the characters are really why I'd watch it again. Uh, not so much for the actual story. Rosario Dawson, I enjoyed her. The fact that she would uh, talk back to her boss. You always got to enjoy that in a movie. You always got to enjoy that in general. It's always fun to watch someone just like, I know I'm smarter than you, so I'm going to talk back to you. It, it's one of those things. Sometimes they're not, and it just, they just seem dumb at that point. But Rosario Dawson's character was like, yeah, she is obviously the smarter one here. De derail the train if that's the only option you can think of derail it while you can not when it's in the middle of a city yeah so i would say it's worth a watch i guess just for chris pine and denzel washington and rosario dawson just the just the cast itself and don't forget to like and subscribe thank you all for watching talk to you next time doodles mm -hmm.